Hi, it's Jenny Meadows for British Athletic Workout Wednesday. What strange times we're in, of course, and um, you know, really frustrating for a lot of athletes who are looking to get their season up and running in the next couple of months. But this is a great opportunity to take advantage of doing all of those other things, sometimes called the one percenters that we don't always get the opportunity to do. Um, as a retired athlete now, I know that these things offered me much more than 1%. They were a fundamental part of my training. And by that, I'm talking about stretching, core stability, strength conditioning. I know when I go for a run now, I can kind of get in the posture, but I've not quite got the strength to hold it. So this is a good opportunity for me to take advantage of this you know, longer time at home at the moment. And hopefully some athletes, parents, coaches, all have a go. Maybe you can use these as great resources for your athletes to get through this period. So let's get on with it. Let's get on to the first one. So I'm gonna take you through a series of eight core exercises, kind of core strength conditioning, using minimum equipment. And the first one is toe balance. So first of all, before we start, it's really important that you try and engage your core. So first of all, stand in on one leg, assist yourself, feel really comfortable in that position. When you're feeling confident, if you can just raise up onto the ball of your foot. And at this point, I'm going to start my watch. We're doing this for one minute, she says. Okay, so I've started and straight away, you can already see that I'm a little bit unbalanced, probably just because I was actually looking at my watch there. It's really important to be really, really tall throughout this exercise. So I'm working really, really hard here, trying to engage my core, keep my shoulders really level. Straight away, I can feel my glute on the standing leg, working really, really hard. As the minute goes on, you actually might feel a little bit of burn as it's getting a little bit fatigued. Again, it's really important to try and keep tall throughout this. Don't collapse that back. One of the things that I find is if you can really concentrate on your big toe, if you can try and think about pushing your big toe all the way into the floor, that really, really helps you just try and get that balance and to maintain it. So 10 seconds to go now. I can just feel my calves, especially the bottom of my calf, my soleus, just getting a little bit tight and we're gonna stop. Okay, so we can go straight in to the second leg. And again, just get that balance. First of all, get onto that ball of our foot and let's go. Okay, so again, we're gonna do this for one minute. So one minute on one side, one minute on the other. You can actually build up to try and do two sets of this. So again, I'm really making sure that I'm pushing my big toe into the floor. I can actually see, see myself and you'll be able to see me wobbling a little bit. That's fine, that's fine. It's showing that your body's just trying to adjust to this. It's really good for all the muscles, all the intrinsic muscles in your feet as well. When you do quite a lot of running, your feet work really, really hard. I think a lot of people get really, really tight feet, which is sometimes where you can have calf issues, and especially your gastroc, which is a little bit further up, and soleus, and that dreaded word, the Achilles. So it's really, really good to make sure that we're working all of these muscles, all our stability muscles, you know, some of those smaller muscles go unnoticed sometimes, but they're really, really fundamental. Two seconds to go, and stop. Okay, so the next exercise you'll see, I've got some props. So I do happen to have a dumbbell at home anyway. It's not heavy, it's three kilograms. I would actually recommend a really light weight for this exercise. Anything from one to three kilograms is enough. Um, also, I've got a bottle of cordial. So I'm gonna use a bottle of cordial just in case anyone at home hasn't got a dumbbell that they can access. So this is a little bit of progression from the toe hold that we've just done. We're gonna start exactly the same and we just wanna find our balance on one foot before we start. When you're confident, when you've got that core working, you've got your glutes switched on, we're just gonna come up onto the ball of our foot and we're actually holding the weighted object in the opposite hand of the standing leg. And you can see that my knee has just come up slightly. This time what we're going to do is we're just bringing the weighted object away from our body and back down. So again, it's just stressing the body in a little bit of a different way. Oh, I can feel my intrinsic straight away from the work that we've just done from the toe holds. 
So this time again, we're just really focusing on the core, we're focusing on the glutes, and the whole purpose of doing this one and bringing the weighted object in is just really to take that weight away from the center of gravity, to stress the body a little bit more. You know, this is probably only around about two kilograms. So if you think what, you know, athletes can lift in the gym, you know, some really heavy squats and things like that, you know, we're talking in excess of 100 kilograms and you're actually thinking, okay, now I've just got a two kilogram weight. But this is really, really important when we're kind of working on the fundamentals, like I say, the stabilizers, the core to all that running, all that activity, whether you're a runner, jumper or thrower, these are vital muscles for everyone. So we're going to do 15 on each side and straight away I've got a real stinging burn in that glute. So before we move on to the other side, again, just find the confidence standing on that leg. When you've got the confidence, get up onto the ball of your foot. Obviously we've changed arms this time and when you're ready, off we go. So it would help if you can find something to focus on, you know, whether it's um, a kind of spot on the wall or just something you can even do this in front of a mirror this would really really help if some people are rocking a little bit more than me you can see that I am rocking slightly that's fine again it's just the body adapting to it again I can still feel the burn in my opposite glute from the exercise I've just done and like I can't reiterate enough it's only two kilograms and I think I'm on number 10 now and talk and count at the same time. So we're just gonna do 15 of these. So we're just gonna do 15 on the left, 15 on the right, but of course you can build up. You might wanna do two sets of this. You might actually wanna increase the reps. That's a good one, we all feeling it? Okay, after all that standing up, we get to lie down. These are the exercises I like the best. Okay, so this one is, we're gonna work on our glutes. So what I want you to do is just to lie on your side. It's really important that you just tilt our pelvis slightly forward for this one. So we just really, really maximize the exercise. It's up to you where you want to put your hand, but I generally put my hand in front of my body there just to get a good base. So we're going to do some glute raises. So another good tip for this one is to try to keep your toe pointing downwards. Um, if you keep your toe pointed downwards and your pelvis forward, it really does just really maximize that effect that you're gonna get in your glute muscle. So we're going to start off with, again, pelvis tilted forwards, our toe down, and we're just gonna do 10 raises from the bottom just to the middle. So nice and controlled. Again, this is really concentrating on our um, glutes, of course. I'm still using my core of course, still engaged at every single point on this. Just really trying to relax through my shoulders as well. So we're up to seven, eight, nine. Okay, last one, and then we're gonna go straight in from the middle to the top. So just hold it at the middle, straight to the top. So it doesn't need to be too much of a movement. We really wanna make sure that with that pelvis is still tilting forwards, our glute is still activated. We want to make sure that we're not overworking our back muscles. It's not about getting a strain on your lower back. If you are feeling a little bit of a strain on your lower back, just reduce the amount that you're bringing your leg up. Just make it a smaller movement. And now 10 has happened straight from the bottom and we're doing the full movement. So again, really controlled, not too jerky. So we've done 10 from the bottom to the mid, 10 from mid to the top, and now we're doing 10 the whole way. And just on eight, start burning now. And 10. Brilliant, okay, changing sides. So again, we're just gonna do 10, 10, 10, um, from each of the positions. But if you want to, you can go on to do multiple sets of this. But straight away, just as I'm turning over, I can feel that burn from what I've just done. So again, we're just gonna relax through the shoulders, find yourself a really, really nice base, make sure both your legs are straight, and I'm just gonna tilt my pelvis slightly forward, I'm gonna make sure that I point that big toe down, 
and again, off we go. So just from the bottom to the midpoint, get nice and fluent, no jerky movements. Six, seven. If you feel your pelvis going backwards at any point, just readjust yourself. I just did a little bit of a readjustment then myself. Okay, and then we're at the middle. The mid to top. Straight away, I can, I can feel these glutes working really, really hard. Just really trying to make sure that my core's still engaged as well. Not overworking that back. We don't want our back to come into play at all. And then last one. Okay, last bit of turn all the way this time. I can feel those previous 20 that I've done. Only in halfway through this set. Six, seven, if it's burn at this point, keep working, keep engaging that core. And we're done. So after all that work on our intrinsics, on our core, on our glutes, you have relieved to know that we're gonna move on to another muscle now, and we're gonna concentrate on the hamstrings. So everything that we do in the sport of athletics is single leg. So I think it's really important that we make sure that we work the muscles in the same way that we actually use them for functional movement. So for this one, I'm gonna use the couch. Um, you can use whatever you can get your hands on, but the couch, um, is a good alternative to a step up box or anything like that that you would have in the gym. So this one you just want to put your heel on the couch, you want to make sure your knee is around about at 90 degrees and we want our other knee in the air. Okay so again you'll get sick of me saying this but I really want you to try and make sure you engage your core before we even start. You can work those glutes as well, we might as well make the most of this exercise and this time what we want to do is just get you to raise yourselves in the air, just like this. Straight away, I can feel the strain on that hamstring. We just want to draw up our hips in three inches, and then we're going to go back to the top there. So we just drop in slightly, and then back to the top. We're going to do ten of these on each side. So again, it's a really, really fluid movement. We're not trying to jerk at all really make sure our glutes, our core and our hamstring are all working with each other. So we're just extending that hamstring as we get through our phases. And again, this is complete body weight exercise, but I'm getting such a good return for that effort on it. Okay, and then just drop down. And at this point, you should actually be feeling you know which leg you've just worked, that's for sure. Just recheck yourself. I'm gonna recheck myself before I start, just to check you are at 90 degrees. And um, sometimes you do actually slide backwards. I slid back a little bit there. So this time we're gonna have the leg that's just worked, you'll be relieved. It's gonna have a nice rest in the air. Get that knee in the air. And then we're just gonna raise up to the top. Using the hamstring, just drop down of inches and then back to the top and I can really feel my glutes working as well as my hamstring here. If you feel yourself just go past that strain of the hamstring, just lower it. So I felt myself almost drop my core then and I was using my back a little bit and arching. So it's just a real precise moment where you just feel that fighting point, a little bit like trying to find your your gear in your car, driving non-automatic. I'm just going to do 10 of these. I think I've got two left. I hope I have anyway because it's burning. And last one. Amazing. And again, you can add to that, you can add to the sets, you can add to the reps. Okay, so we're back on our feet now for exercise number five. So this one is called the curtsy squat. I'm used to people curtsying whenever they see me anyway, so you know, this is uh, familiar territory for me. So basically what we want to do is start with our feet shoulder width apart. 
okay? And we're gonna be using our left hand side first, which means we're gonna be moving our right leg, okay? We're gonna do eight to the left, and then we're gonna do eight to the right. So first of all, engage that core, like I keep saying, just squeeze that belly button in slightly, and we're using our transverse abdominis as well, which basically are just at the, at the top of where your trousers would be. So just really make sure that we're using those before we start, really good glute muscles. And then what we're gonna do is move our right leg, and we're just bringing it across, round, and we're just touching the floor as we squat. So at the same time, all the time, our left is actually bearing the weight. So again, we're just bringing our left leg, right leg round as we squat. So our left leg is in control the whole time, bringing us back from that squat. We're just reaching out with our right, making sure we just squat down to the side. And again, I can just feel that left working really, really hard through that glute. Okay, at all times we're making sure that our back is straight. So again, we're not bending over too much. And we're gonna do the same to the right hand side now. Exactly the same, set ourselves up, feet shoulder width apart, core nice and engaged. And we're just reaching out with our left leg and bringing it back. Again, we're just a little touch of the floor. And it's our right glute doing all the work this time, keeping our back nice and straight. Just touch, squat, and bring it back. Just three more. Do eight to each side. Again, you might want to add reps. You might want to add sets. But for me, first time I've done this for a while, I'm just going to do one set of eight to each side. So get ready for a little bit of pain. We've eased you into this. Um, exercise number six is glute step up circuit. Really, really the vein of my life when I was an athlete, but so, so productive. So what we're gonna do is you see that I've moved to a different location in my house now. So I've got some stairs. Um, everyone should have stairs in their house, unless you live in a bungalow, I presume. And if you could just find a, a small step, that would be great. Um, I'm quite lucky because I've got something to hold on to. So I've got a banister. If you are using a step, you might want to hold on to something. So whether it could be a brush, a broom or something like that. And um, it takes quite a lot to be able to balance without holding on to anything. So what we want you, you to do is obviously if you're working on your left leg, uh, we're talking about 10 o'clock. So you think about the clock, the way the, the clock goes. You want your foot to be around about 10 o'clock. When we change sides, we'll have it at two o'clock. So here we go. And I'm gonna hold on. So before we start this, um, we want you to try and hitch. So again, if I can just show you that, so this is where my hip normally is, and then we just want you to hitch. So by hitching, it just really makes the glutes have to work really, really hard. So I'm hitching there on my right hand side, which instantly gives me a burning sensation on my left hand side, but that is good. Burning is normally a bad thing, this is good in athletics when you're actually trying to get some core stability and improve all those functional and strength things. So first of all, let's get that hitch on. Then all I want you to do is just have a real quarter squat. So it's just a minimal squat. So when we squat, we don't want your knee to go out to the side, okay? So we're gonna start by the hitch. Then we're just gonna quarter squat. We just want you to re-hitch at that point and then just your leg to go out at the side, okay? So we only want the hitch to just be really, really minimum, about two inches, okay? So what we want to do again, just hitch, quarter squat, again, that magic two inches that I keep saying, and then bring it back to the side. So the movement starts, hitch, quarter squat, hitch, out to the side. Let's go again. Hitch, quarter squat, hitch, out to the side. I've done about three or four, not sure how many, but this is absolutely burning. Burning means you're doing it good. So I'm gonna go for 10 of these. Again, you can just build it up slowly. This one is all about quality rather than the quantity. I know I used to get up to around about 30 of these. And already I can feel my left leg really, really shaking. So one more more, 
So we we'll just hitch, quarter squat, hitch, and kick out. Okay, I'm gonna change legs. So I'm on the opposite leg this time. So this time the foot is at two o'clock. Um, already still feeling the burn from that previous leg. So exactly the same. We're gonna start with a hitch. So again, just to reiterate that hitch, this is where my leg normally is. I'm gonna hitch it, just about two inches or so. I wanna see if we can maintain that hitch the whole time. But we're just gonna quarter squat, re-hitch, and then bring our leg out. So the re-hitching is just really, in case it's dropped, you might not actually need to re-hitch if it's still in the same position. So hitch, just a quarter squat, just dropping about two inches. I think I maintained it, but I'll just do a little bit of an extra re-hitch, just in case. Again, we're not dropping much. Really try and maintain that hitch. And as you bring your leg out, that's when you'll really feel that extra burn. Again, I'm still thinking about trying to keep a straight back. I'm still thinking about my core. So hitch, quarter squat, three hitch and out. Hitch, quarter squat. Don't really think I have to re-hitch, it seems pretty good. And out. Two more to make it all the way up to 10. And we're done. Okay, after all that glute step up work, we're back on the floor for exercise number seven. This one is a jackknife. So basically we wanna get ourselves into a sideways plank position. So you're gonna be resting on, on your elbow. So make sure that your shoulders are locked, it's nice and loose. And when you can, you're just gonna come up into the plank position on the side. Okay, this time again, like one of the exercises we did earlier, it's really important that our pelvis is tilted forwards and we want to make sure that our shoulder is actually backwards so it's not forwards like this. We really want to make sure it's backwards to get the maximum out of this exercise. And then all we're going to do is just drop that down a couple of inches and back up. Drop down a couple of inches and back up. This is really working. All the muscles here in our side are oblique muscles. And we're just going to do 15 of these. And again, this is another exercise where it's quality rather than quantity. If you feel yourself at any point going backwards, really make sure that you just tilt that pelvis forwards again and make sure that your shoulder's backwards. But again, it's quality over quantity. You should just really feel those oblique muscles working. And again, really engaging that core. Okay, time to change sides. And I think because you've done it in the order that you have, working those intrinsic muscles, working the glutes, etc. when I'm now doing all of this, I can still feel some of the effects of the other things, which is good, because it shows that it's actually a workout, as well as um, strengthening those areas. So again, we want to make sure we're nice and relaxed with that shoulder, in a really nice, comfy position. And then get up into that sideways plank position. Again, make sure that pelvis is rotated forwards and our shoulders back before we start. It's a really good position. Again, we're just dropping a couple of inches and then coming back up again. Again, it should be a really fluent motion. It shouldn't be jerky at all. We're not in a rush to do this exercise. If you feel your pelvis at any point, just go backwards, just do a quick recheck. And again, what I'm thinking of doing this exercise is really drawing my belly button in, making sure I'm getting a dual use of this, it's not just for those obliques, it's for the core as well. The whole chain, my glutes are still burning from the previous exercises. Two more. And we're done. So well done, you've made it so far to exercise eight, which is the last one. This one is called Dead Bug. Um, this is a personal favorite stroke, worst of mine. Um, Trevor, my husband, always laughs at me. He thinks I literally do look like I'm a dead bug. I look like I've been squatted. So um, let's go for this one. So basically we're gonna lie on our back and we're bringing our knees um, together. 
Then what we're going to do is bring them up into the air, vertical, and our arms as well. And then what we want to do is really engage our core for this one. So what you want to do is really squeeze your belly button into the floor and really make sure your back as well, your lower back, is really squeezed into the floor as well. Okay, we're going to work opposite. So I'm going to take my right hand and my left foot and we're bringing them, my hand above my head and our foot to the floor. Okay, so let's give this one a go. So all the time, it's a fluid movement. We're not rushing this one. Again, I've said it several times. It's quality over quantity in all of these. We'll do 10 each side, so that's 20 movements all together. And again, it's not jerky. At this point, again, I'm just making sure that my belly button is really squeezed in and making sure that my back isn't coming off the floor. I'm not quite touching the floor with either my hand or my foot. Really making sure I'm stretching out that psoas muscle. The psoas muscle is the muscle that we use when we run. It's something that we don't work enough when we have quite sedentary lifestyles, sitting down quite a lot at the desk, when we're working at work or at school, college, etc. We're sat down quite a lot throughout the day and then we try and run or jump or throw and we really need to extend those hip flexors and use those psoas muscles and sometimes we get really really stiff I think I've done in excess of 10 now so I'll stop after this last one so it's that muscle here you can actually feel it you go from your drawstring and you just come to the side that muscle that's so reactive for everything that we do so it's a great one again just real a whole body movement that chain is getting the glutes to work together the core to work together really making sure we've got that functional stability in the core we made it to eight well done guys so as i said at the beginning of the video what unprecedented times we're actually living in I think this is just a really good opportunity for everyone just to take a pause at the moment. I think for athletes, coaches, parents, everyone involved in the sport, it's a great opportunity to actually look at the technical and the tactical components of our sports. We always concentrate on the physical things and when I was a full-time athlete at the top of my sport, it really gave me the opportunity to look at, like I say, those one percenters, the tactical things, the technical things. There's so much content out there that you, you know, can go and look at. Lots of videos and technical models, online training resources, education resources that lots and lots of people are putting out there at the moment. One of the things that I would say is, especially to youngsters, go online, find some footage of you know, current athletes or athletes of days gone by. Maybe watch some of that coverage, see what they do technically, and really you know, use that as an opportunity of thinking, actually, what can I bring? Can I put some of that into my training when training returns to normality? Or is it technical things that I could be doing now? Those guys involved in the running aspects of the sport, tactics is so, so important. I think it's a really good opportunity to maybe watch some footage, watch and put yourself in that position of athletes gone by and maybe pause it and think, what would be going through my head? What would I do? Put yourselves in their shoes. Hopefully we can come out of this with some great new educational resources. We can come out of this with some good content for you to think about in the future. But most of all, we can all come out of this together, like I say, after the pause. Times like this make us miss our sport so much. I'm missing being involved, I'm missing watching it, but um, everyone's in the same boat. So let's stay together, guys. Let's stay healthy, and hopefully you'll join into another Workout Wednesday soon.